Hey, welcome to the Drop Zone. This is Dylan DeChair, a former touring pro who kind of found out that his swing is a little too hitchy, but he did write a book about golf in America, so I think he's a little credible. This is Sean Zock, native son of Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, so he's a good Midwesterner. He's only 26, but he's been covering golf since about 2013, so he's the youngest grizzled veteran in the media. I'll take that. This is the Drop Zone. We're going to talk about golf, hopefully make it fun, and hope for you to join us every single week. Topic number one, Bryson DeChambeau. This week in Bryson was a ridiculous week. It, it starts, really, really was. It starts with Brendan Porath, friend of the show, tweeting out a video yeah. of Bryson losing his mind at yeah. the British Open on the driving range, which is the first time we saw it actually in person, but you've seen it earlier this year. I was at the Memorial, and after the second and third rounds, you know, 8 p.m. all the way till just about darkness, Bryson was the last man on the range. He was losing his mind, not to this extent, there were no clubs flying, but he was winning the golf tournament. Yeah, like leading the event, but also freaking out. And somehow that wasn't even the, like, the weirdest part of his week. He, on 18, he blows up on Sunday. He had been leading the event for 67 holes to that point. Hits a couple balls in the water hazard. You can see it, he's complaining about the wind, the trees, yeah. the water. Like this guy is complaining about golf things. And then he all complain about. taps in for triple bogey on 18. Not, and not a good look. Goes a little quick with the handshake. Have you ever seen that. anybody like just blow by? Well, you don't really see people get criticized for it very much, but. He felt the heat. He did. You could tell that he really felt it because he came out first with this apology on Instagram. And then what do we see last night? a 12 minute interview with Mike Tirico, yeah. apology tour. So yeah. he's apologizing for how he looked in the past week. And yeah, it wasn't a good look, but Bryson, we don't need 15 minutes of you apologizing. This felt like someone does something pretty bad and it's like a redemption interview on yeah. Oprah. You like go Oprah. sit on the couch and you open up to hear to Mike Tirico. It's a very intimate setting. They were like, you Him know, Tirico, me to you. At one point he touched Bryson yes, DeChambeau's Yes, I saw that, it was very that tender. Was weird. This week in Golf Karma, let's talk about Joel Dahman. Yes. Joel Domination is what has been going <laughs> on recently since he called Sung Kang a cheater four weeks ago. You don't see that very much. In the four tournaments since then, T5, T2, T15, and T8. That means Striping that it. three of the best four performances of his career have come in the last month. Uh, this can't be a coincidence. Am I right? No, it is a total coincidence. The golf gods might be shining down on him for the first time in his life, but Sung Kang also went out and played really well at the British Open. It's complete coincidence, but you don't want to see it that way. I think that there is something more here. Walk with me a little bit through this. I know okay. Joel Dahman and I do have something in common, so maybe I'm biased. He was the best player on the Canadian Tour in 2014, and I was the worst player on the Canadian <laughs> Tour in 2015, so maybe I'm just taking this, but he maybe gets a little extra edge out of this. He gets a little confidence coming out of this that, you know, you did something, you're in the public eye, all of a sudden every eye is trained on you. You get a little more dialed in. All of a sudden it's not, oh, maybe I'll skip this practice session. It's like, hey, every shot we're all dialed in right now. What's great about it is that this is far from over. Dahman versus Kang, because Kang goes to the British Open, plays well, gets asked about it, of course, because this story is not concluded yet. And he says, I did everything fine. Yeah. I did exactly what I wanted to do. In fact, I want to say more, but I'm not going to say more. Like, there is a story that is going to come out of this, maybe out of the PGA Championship. I imagine they might both be there. I'm waiting to hear what that story ends up being. Two of them were in the same place a few weeks ago, and they, they both said, oh, yeah, we wanted to talk a little <laughs> more about it, but we just didn't get the chance. So Breaking news, PGA Tour tuned. players will lie to your face. This week in Rules Gone Wrong is far below the PGA Tour. It is at the Women's Met Golf Association. So really, really weird stuff happened. I mean, you look at the headline. It is intimidating golfer kicked out of tournament before final round. Like this is the exact story that people who hate golf love to see because it tells them that they can continue to hate golf. But it's a, it's a juicy headline. It, the, the lady involved Yeah, get me is, into this a little bit because <laughs> this has levels to it. Yes, Mariana Monaco. She is, a, I think, the reigning New York State women's amateur champion. So she's a player. 
she's a good player, and so she's playing in a couple Met events. She is a, she's a former intern at the Women's Met Golf Association, and she hit a couple drivers off a range that she wasn't supposed to hit drivers off of. She was told that is, according to her, and according to Jeff Ritter, our enterprising reporter at golf.com, checking out the story, she shouldn't have done it, but she only had a couple. And eventually she drives there the next day and someone nap, taps on her window. It's the person in third place saying, yeah, I'm there, the president, you're out of here. We need to it's really crazy. Un, we need to really unwrap this. This Be is only in golf could something ridiculous like this happen. There's a few different things at play here because she was basically asked to withdraw, which is like, you know, being asked to step down. There was no option here. Yeah. I have heard and seen plenty of people hitting balls over the nets at driving ranges, hitting the ball into the woods, through the driving range, into the road, to the road. I've never seen anyone kicked out of a tournament for that. Nor have I seen anyone forced to sign a letter stating that you're withdrawing from a tournament. And finally, I have definitely not seen someone in second place at an event get kicked out by the president of the organization running that event who is also in third place. Clearly it is a difficult thing to explain. This, this, is, this is blows my mind, this entire thing. Like I said, only in golf could something where the rules are so stingy and strict come to this super nonsensical conclusion. All right, this week in Do Less, we have Paula Kramer, not yet a friend of the show, but we hope so. Very talented golfer, but not a great effort at the Happy Gilmore here at the Ladies Scottish Open. This is probably the worst Happy Gilmore swing or attempt that I've ever seen. I mean, yeah. Look at how segmented she is. She is, goes back with her club and then shuffles her feet and then swings. This is just the like, whole thing about the Happy Gilmore athletic. is that it's one continuous deal. It's like comes out of being a hockey player. And so this should actually be do more because... Yes, please do more, Paula Kramer. Look, I don't care if you swing and miss. I don't care if it goes 300 yards. I just want you to go full bore and, you know, also hopefully not kill your coach who's filming the whole thing. Props to Paula for trying something outside the box. Reminded me of John Peterson, our yeah, favorite LSU sure. grad who has been retiring, unretiring, re-retiring. Before all that, he was famous for his Happy Gilmore off the first tee in Malaysia oh last year. Oh my gosh, that's right. And the internet loved this. You know, golf fans just ate it up. He here, this no guy fucks. is. This guy is so epic. This was just the coolest thing. He goes out here, but if you look at the video, he just like takes a little half step. No one even knew what he was doing, and then he kind of slices it off into the pond. This wasn't some crazy rebellious thing. I think we need to hold golfers to a higher standard of <laughs> like what is, standard, what is yeah. cool and like renegade. John Peterson clearly gives no Fs. Like he does not care. He's retired and unretired. And See, golf to him is this weird thing. If he really didn't care, he would have gone full Gilmore. He went a quarter Gilmore at the most. Clearly not enough. It's guest time. <laughs> All right, guest time. Episode one means guest number one. We've got a good one. Writer, author, Ivy League grad, Michael Bamberger is joining us today. Thank you very much for that. How does it feel to be in the drop zone? Well, I, I love being in the drop zone, except for when I'm literally in the drop zone, because yeah. that is a bad thing. But being in the drop zone with you guys is a great experience. No I'm honored to be, to be the, the first one. Sean, how do you decide when to go formal and button up the flannel shirt on August yes. 1st? It's a good question. Uh, it's not on any specific date. Mm -hmm. It's really just when I get in the drop zone, I want to feel loose yeah. and casual yeah. and let everything fly. Yes, Dylan's dressed for the occasion. I am a little bit more than you are the most of us because you've just come from a uh, luncheon in the city. You made us wait because you were having a pretty great lunch with Eric Trump. What is it like to go to lunch with Eric Trump this day and age. How does yep. it happen? Yeah, well, I've had a lot of, spent a lot of time with the uh, father long before uh, he ran for office. I played nine and a half rounds of golf with, uh, with, with Donald Trump uh, in about 2006, 2000, well, over the years, really. So I've known Trump for a while, President Trump, and... Uh, um, Did you beat him? Uh, I couldn't beat Donald Trump uh, uh, even, even up, uh, but the fact is, when you play golf with Donald Trump, it's really not golf it's not as fair. we know it, it's not you golf. know, okay. it's, uh, it's golf under his terms and uh, playing golf with Trump went, as I did was a very, very enjoyable experience. I'm leaving politics aside, I'm yeah. just talking about the experience of playing golf with Donald Trump. Uh, he's a very gracious, uh, generous guest and he really uh, lavishes a lot of attention on you. 
The only reason that any of that happened was because I had something that he wanted, mm -hmm. which was a good write-up in Sports Illustrated. And a byline in SI. Uh, yes, and, uh, and lunch day with Eric Trump was, uh, was very uh, similar. Got a little bit of the engineering uh, background from him. He was talking about uh, Lane Cable and Turnberry. It was a casual, off-the-record uh, uh, lunch, but this certainly would be uh, fine to share. But he was talking about Lane Cable at Turnberry and, and different things and whether, uh, whether a British Open, Open Championship would ever uh, go back to, uh, yeah. to Turnberry. Let's bring it back to you because okay. you've been doing this for a long time. Dylan and I, when you I'm were our doing, age. I've been doing the drop zone for exactly <laughs> as long as you guys have been. But in golf writing, you at our age decided I'm gonna go caddy on the PGA Tour for an extended period of time. Who did you caddy for? What was that like? And you wrote a book about it that kind of was like your launch pad into the industry. Well, I caddied for one week for Brad Faxon at the uh, Honda Classic in uh, 1985. And uh, then I was fired for cause. Uh, at the end of that week, and uh, then I caddied for, but we've become, well, <laughs> <laughs> we've been friends ever since, really, and uh, what, what we've had a, we have a nice run. Uh, broad general incompetence. Oh, um, I associate um, that with you. There was a lot, you know, going from being a club caddy, it's interesting, like, you talk to Jim Bones Mackay, yeah. he's never been a club caddy, and he says, I couldn't do that, and I believe he's not really? being modest, I believe he's being accurate, in other words, you know, carrying around two bags zigzagging yeah. across the fairway. That's you know, you got Mrs. Gunabald here and Mr. Yeah. Smith here, and you got to keep everything straight. And I've had that. Ex pardon me, I've had that experience at at, uh, at Shinnecock Hills once, where I caddied for this woman who had about nine woods in her bag, and each yes. one had a head cover. Yeah. Yes. And each head head cover had to go with a particular wood, but I couldn't keep track of which one with which. Oh, but no. after the round, or maybe maybe it was years afterwards, it was explained to me that the number of stripes on the Oh, on the, on the that home is far main. too subtle for Yeah, I mean, I was not picking up on <laughs> stuff like that. You go from caddy back to writing. You write a book about it, and now you've been doing this for probably as long as Dylan and I have been alive. Not well, to, to make you feel old. No, here, no, you know, I, you I like growing old in this game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm 58, and, uh, and uh, Alan Shipnuck and Sean and I were uh, the three of us. Uh, Dylan didn't get to go uh, this year, but I hope he will in the future. But the three of us were sitting together at the British Open, and there was Bernard Langer playing so beautifully at Carnoustie at age 60. And I turned to Shipnuck. I never know how old Shipnuck is. I, it's just the total <laughs> guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I said, you know, the weirdest thing about uh, Langer being 60 is it doesn't make 58 feel old at all. And I don't feel uh, my age. But yeah, I be, you know, I, I would say my. I will also say that this is the same guy who has biked to Shinnecock this year. You run yeah, all over St. Andrews. Flat, but, uh, he's a jogger. He's I mean, a you are not runner. old by any well, means. Well, I, I appreciate it, but I think the game, you know, the game will uh, always surprise you. And people say, oh, don't you ever get bored writing about golf? And the answer is I truly don't because there's, and then there's always new people coming in and, and people leaving. And, um, and it's natural for storytelling. So uh, it, uh, it suits me. Uh, yeah. Excuse me to the ball. And you say that you don't get bored writing about golf. There is one guy that you've written about, I'm guessing, more than anyone else. And this year, probably even more so, especially the more you write online, Tiger Woods. You've maybe written 30 stories this year for the magazine and website just about Tiger. Do you get tired of writing about him ever? You know, I figure, I, I know I've written north of half a million words on Tiger Woods, but I've probably written more like a million. And I feel like Tiger's camp judges me by about 800 words that they really hate. You know, I think there's a tremendous from amount, you know. 800 just, words from a while yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, well, different, diff, different periods. Um, but that's okay. I mean, that, you know, that's part of their strength is that they're extremely insular. And their mm -hmm. thing is like, you're on our team or you're off our team. Yeah. Well, by definition, I cannot be and don't want to be, and it wouldn't be appropriate for any of us to be on his team. Right. So if that only leaves off the team, yeah, then I'm off the team. But I think like, like the both of you, we're just trying to figure this guy out. And right now, he's got trade secrets that he's trying to hold on to. Yeah. Sure. And we're the enemy of the people uh, because <laughs> we're trying to uncover what those yeah, trade secrets yeah. are. Plenty of career left for Tiger Woods. Well, Plenty of career, I would say, left for you. That's a little bit of behind the curtain on Michael Bamberger. Michael, thank you for joining us. Delighted. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, and that was Michael Bamberger. Thanks, Michael, for joining us, our first ever guest on The Drop Zone. Now it's time for the quick six. First up, number one, will you miss Firestone? The tour heads there for the last time this week. No, I'm really not gonna miss it because it's 85, feels like 95. Though we're heading to St. Louis next week, it'll probably feel just like that. Number two, the USJ and RNA are kind of cracking down on green reading books. Does this even matter? I think it could be a big deal, but what I'm most excited about is how do you enforce what someone writes down 
on a piece of paper. Uh, number three, you've become a big Scotland guy over the last couple weeks. What was your favorite part of this senior British Open? Tom Watson shooting a low score was phenomenal, but a bird getting sniped out of the air with a drive was something I'd never seen before. That was awesome. Number four, Dylan, you somehow got a new golden tee into our office. You did it all by yourself. Was this the greatest thing that you've done as an adult? Probably at least in my time at golf.com, and it has earned me some good job security, if nothing else. Uh, number five, more serious note, pro athletes all over the place are getting called out for their old tweets. Uh, racism, homophobia, how long is it before someone on the PGA Tour gets exposed? Not long, uh, because those tweets are out there, and I've seen a couple of them. I give it two months. Number six, Tiger, he's back at Firestone. How does he fare this weekend? I was hoping you'd ask this because Tiger Woods is gonna win this week for the first time in five years. You heard it here first. If you can't tell, Dylan's a pretty big Tiger fan. Not a fan, I'm a journalist. That's right, we're both journalists. Thanks for watching, first episode of The Drop Zone. Join us next week, we'll be at the PGA Championship at Bell Reef. Between now and then, we're actually driving from Chicago to St. Louis. Yeah. Not really sure what that highway is, but hopefully there's a golf course along Come the way. Come find us. Let us know where we should play and join us. You can let us know on Twitter at Sean underscore Zach, Dylan underscore DeChair, golf underscore com. Until then, stay tuned to golf.com.